It's deja vu all over again as Matilda composer Tim Minchin returns to Broadway with the new show Groundhog Day. We're here at the Knickerbocker Hotel to catch up with the songwriter. Hello, Tim Minchin. Hi, how are you? I'm really well. I'm so happy to talk to you. Oh, good. Because you have a new musical coming to Broadway. I do. Well, we do. Yeah. Groundhog we have a musical, Day. Groundhog Day the musical of all things. Of why all not? things. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Well, Matilda just closed on January 1st, yep. and now Groundhog Day just started rehearsals, so how oh, have you been later. emotionally this January? Um, uh, sort of numb. Um, mm -hmm. There's so much going on at the moment, and I was unfortunately not able to be there at the closing because I was doing that thing that people do where they spend time with their families. I know, it's what? weird, really? right? I'm, I, I wasn't wow. comfortable with it, but apparently <laughs> that's the way to way to do Christmas and stuff. I didn't realise how special it was going to be and that actually I, I was really missing out on a kind of beautiful occasion because the house was full of fans and all the kids were there and oh, it was yeah. obviously very emotional and I really, really felt the loss of ha having missed that. I was lucky enough to see Groundhog Day in London. Yes. It's fabulous. Very it's lucky. Fabulous. And I'm wondering what about that cranky weatherman reliving his life every day appealed to you or what you related to um, about it? Well, I, I'm obsessed by uh, ideas, you know. I, even in my comedy, I guess I do sort of um, comic treatment of big ideas. Most of my comedy is a bit about, you know, sex and death and God, basically. And uh, even Matilda, which is obviously a children's story, although it's quite dark, the thing I love is finding, uh, and the only reason you write a musical is uh, the, the only stories that support musicals are stories that have room to flesh out mm -hmm. the themes or shine a spotlight on some emotional state that we all relate to or whatever. And so even in Matilda there's lots and lots of sort of mostly subtextual social satire in the lyrics and stuff and so Groundhog Day just because it's a, actually a, a story about how one should live one's life. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's actually a sort of morality tale about you know, humanism and being good to people and finding happiness by giving, not by taking and um, learning to find the beauty in what's in front of you instead of always aspiring to change things and seek hap you know. There's a lot to chew on there. There's heaps and heaps and, I, and, and it's about death, uh, absolutely about death. And it's and, a musical comedy. And it's very <laughs> funny and it's a, ro it's a romantic comedy yeah. without a doubt. Did you feel unleashed a little bit after doing a family-friendly musical with Matilda, even though there were some, of course, very adult themes in yes. it, to let your comedy, let your raunchy side out with Groundhog Day? Yeah, definitely. I wasn't repressing <laughs> myself in Matilda, I guess, but, no. but, but there's no doubt Groundhog Day, the musical, is a lot more adult than the... And also just the comedy is more sophisticated. That's right, yeah. Did you it have fun doing that? Yeah, yeah. I'm quite fond of Groundhog Day, I've got to say. It's, um, the, 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 some of the songs in Groundhog Day stand alone as, as numbers more than in Matilda. Matilda sort of confined by its aesthetic and by its tone to a certain Dalian angularity that you couldn't really release from too much, mm -hmm. otherwise you lose the dullness and lose the darkness and lose the sort of um, caricature-y world. Right. Whereas Groundhog Day has got these numbers that represent the different stages he goes through and also represent the... And you've been singing some of them I've, yourself. I've, I've done a couple in public. It's always <laughs> hard to know at this stage what to release because we mm -hmm. don't have a studio recording of it yet. Yes. I would love everyone to hear the music, but at the same time I think... They need to go and see the show. Yeah, you've got to go see the show because out of context, they don't really make sense. You know? Yeah. And I don't want to just release the bluegrass you want and everyone go, oh, he's written a bluegrass musical. And it's like, no, 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 you have to understand the context. Well, that context actually brings up a good point. This is a very American story. Yeah. It takes place in Pennsylvania, Punxsutawney, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I don't think there are groundhogs in Australia. No, it's a very <laughs> American, very and the, American story. And the story. music yeah. sounds American, for lack of a better term. Yeah. Do you it have is. fun exploring that? Yeah. I mean, uh, as an Australian, our, um, our musical culture is all American anyway, and British, but sort of inherited. As the, the, the musical starts, the sort of quite sophisticated, lyric y swing. Mm. And the town's very cheery, and he's very cutting across it. And, and he, just like he goes through a journey of almost like a life. He goes through this sort of adolescent hedonistic phase and then into this suicidal post-adolescent existential crisis phase and then has to learn to be 
it's like the uh, seven stages of man, but the seven stages of this cranky weatherman. Yeah, that's right. And <laughs> they're confined within a day, which means the factors, the the factors he the um, elements he has to work with to find peace in himself and find happiness don't alter, which is a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Because that's the lesson. We, we all want to change everything around us to find happiness when actually you just need to find it uh, yourself. And, and I wanted the music to sort of follow those stages. So, and there's a lot, there's a little, it's, it's, there's a lot of sort of slight irony in the way I use music. There's so a lot of wit with that. With yeah, music. it's a little bit winky, but um, I, I've got a little winky. I, I, I have become a little winky. I, I, um, <laughs> Each phase is represented. The music is harmonically all very linked, so it all makes sense. But mm -hmm. stylistically, it follows him a bit. It's like musically, he has to understand where the town's coming from, and mm -hmm. so it, it's very American. But it didn't require me to sort of research what's American music because right. we're Just bathed in. Look it around. Yeah. 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 So you're doing Larrikins, am I pronouncing it correctly? Larrikins, yeah. Larrikins. Larrikins. With basically every famous Australian in the world. Yeah. Hugh Jackman, Naomi Watts, right? Yeah. Rose Byrne. Is there, um, my understanding is this is about a bilby? Yeah, so this is animated. When, when we say I'm working with those actors, I'm working with their, their voices. Their voices, yes. Yeah. Um, it's a bilby, it's a little marsupial, and a, a big, so ridiculous kangaroo. Is the year of the animal kangaroo. for you? Yeah. yeah, that's right. I didn't notice that. I'm just doing animals. I'm a circus. I'm suddenly a ringmaster of various circi. So you're really going to educate the public about Australians. And yeah, bilby. Because Larrikin, what is a larrikin? Well, look, uh, larrikin is, is a term sort of meaning a rogue who doesn't really care about authority and stuff. I've got to say, I'm not sure the title's going to stick. Okay. Um, so it's hard because you want to talk about I'm just excited it. for you to teach us the Australian secret handshake. I know that there's <laughs> got to be one because everyone's super talented and oh everyone seems God. to like working together. Yeah, it's weird. It's, it, you know, it's a singing animal rock and rolly road movie. It's very different in tone from other animated musicals. I mean, they're mostly Disney. Disney sort of dominated that world. It's kind of an anti-Disney movie, but it's, it's still really a really... You really wouldn't expect anything less from that's you. That's right. <laughs> it's a, it's a full of heart and, and funny songs and eccentric characters, and it's taken many years of my life already, and uh, I'm acting in it, and I wrote the songs, and I'm sort of... And then you have another project where you're, you get to be an actor again, because I, I think mean, people forget yeah. that you are an actor who can follow a script, yeah, not right. just can, someone who can get I on can stage learn and my lines. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I've, I've got a, a reasonable role in a, in a reasonably serious film, I think. I don't know if serious is quite the word, but um, uh, in filming in Hungary and Croatia. Uh, and I'm flying there tonight, and we'll see. <laughs> See what happens. It's 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 a fantastic opportunity for me, but trying to keep these three significant balls in the air is um, horrendous. And then you add the fact that I have a family and children that apparently well, of course. I need to spend time. And uh, it's going to be a, an incredible, joyous, hard five months. Quite a juggling act. Yeah. All right, I have a very important question, yeah. and then I know you have to go to Hungary or wherever you're going. Yeah. I am hungry. At what point are you going to be sick of people asking you about the joke of seeing the Groundhog Day musical over yeah. and over and over again? Well, actually the joke people make is that's just one song, right? And uh, that's a pretty good joke. And uh, so, so people are very interested in how repetition works within this piece. And actually, we could talk about it for hours, as you know, I can talk for hours. But um, it, that's actually not that. It's actually quite a traditional musical form. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't There's call it There's some like magical things that happen yeah, that make it oh, make it fun. Cool stuff. But I do think uh, I've always been interested in that. Uh, you've seen it, and I wonder if you agree that this is the slight shimmer of realizing that it's slightly about what it is to be a performer to do the same oh, lines yeah. to to play to our get roles. Groundhog Day mm. eight shows a week sounds. Yeah. Ironic. Yeah, and there are, uh, they have to do the same thing over and over again on stage and then do it again that night if they've had a matinee and then go to bed and come back and do it. And rehearse it too. Oh my God, it's really... It's a lot of loop. Yeah, a loop. It's an incredibly complicated piece of theatre. People have 14, 17 costume changes. 20, I think one of the characters has 20 something, 27 costume changes. Crazy. It? Yeah. Crazy. It's really exciting to watch. It is like watching a high wire act. It is, and Although it's fantastic. And you're all going to love it. It starts on March 16th 
At the August Wilson Theater. Yeah. Come see Groundhog theater. Day. You guys, Tim Minchin. The, you're, I don't know if I should call you a music comic genius or a comic music genius. I don't know. Do you prefer I mean, one? As long as there's some sort of hyperbole in the adjective you use for me, I'm happy. As long <laughs> Thank as you it's so way much. over the top. I try. It's so good to see you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, you too. Come to Groundhog Day.